this is Jeff from Baron Leathercraft and today we are going to do an unboxing and a review and a tutorial. I hoping, I'm hoping to teach myself how to use this and while I'm teaching myself I'm going to share with you all the pitfalls that I potentially ran into and how to set it up properly. So what we're dealing with today is the Rotary Truck Chuck. The Rotary Chuck by Algo Laser and I'm going to be using this uh, with the uh, Algo Laser Delta 22 watt, but it's also universal as if it functions with all the Algo lasers. Let's go ahead and do an unboxing. All right, here's the contents of the box, except for obviously the glass jars in the back. It came with the quick start guide, which was very good. This was all I needed to actually get this thing going. Obviously, I ripped it, but it still works. Here is your rotary chuck. It's capable of, let me turn this, there you go. It's capable of tilting and it shows you the degrees of how much you're tilting it. Right now I already connected these jaws. These can be put on in both directions depending on what kind of object you're attaching to it. It also comes with this second uh, pair of jaws. If you notice this pair there's like steppers, there's like steps to it for different size things. These would be for larger objects. You have the two devices that go on the end to hold, uh, this, for example, this one is to hold uh, objects that are further distance than the actual plate. And the top of the bottle or whatever it is you're engraving will roll along these right in the center. It's, it acts as a support. And then you have this piece, which is a suction cup at the end, and this will slide in here. Let's see if we can do this with one hand. There you go, and then it will tighten down, and this supports other objects. I also found using it that this really supported it really well. I really didn't need for the things that I made in the back to use these, although, you know, it's still a great support. And I'm sure they have their purposes. I just felt that it was, this side was strong enough to do it. Here you have cables to hook up to your machines. And for example, like they are marked. This one is for the Alpha DIY kit. The one that I'm using here uh, is for the Delta. That's why it's on there. It comes with a tool kit. And it also has these little pegs. I don't know if you see that. There you go. Those pegs are to be able to put jewelry on there. Like you'll you'll put these, this will attach directly to these pins where these are right now. And for example, if you have a little ring, it'll go inside the ring and then spread out so it holds the jewelry. And that's everything that it came with and everything that's necessary. And um, you also need to get some legs for your laser. So if your laser is not, it only has the short stumpy legs on it, you remember this has to go underneath the laser. So you need to buy some legs that go that raise the laser up. I got the legs from Algo Laser and of course because it's an Algo Laser, they work perfectly with with the rotary chuck and the Algo Delta 22 watt that I'm using. One of the things I love about the design of the Algo Laser Delta is it has its own input for the chuck. So you don't have to undo any Y axis. You simply put it into its own input and flip the switch. All right, now we are in light burn. By this time you have your rotary chuck connected to your laser. In my case, I'm using the Algo Laser Delta and I have that connected Wi-Fi. So if you notice right here, that's the one I have selected. If uh, your laser is different, then go ahead and go through the menu and make sure that's the one that is chosen. Now I personally use my laser 90% of the time at absolute coordinates. But since we're using a rotary chuck and we're going to be placing the laser module where we want manually, I'm going to go ahead and change that to current position. And the current position you want on the bottom left hand, right there. So not here, not here, but here. So now that is set up. At this point, we want to go ahead and create some macros. And what these macros are going to do is going to turn off homing and turn on homing. So you'll notice under the cut 
and uh, under the console, I'm sorry, section, you'll have macros. If you haven't changed any of these, this one right here will say macro one, this one will say macro two. Under macro one, I want you to right click on it and recognize that this box is open now. And go ahead and change the label to close home. And under the macro contents, you want to put dollar sign 22 equals zero. That is G code for do not home. Shut off homing. Go ahead and hit OK. I'm going to hit cancel because it's already in there. And now for the second macro, go ahead and click on macro two with the right mouse. And an open window will, a window will open once again. And this time go ahead and hit open home or type open home inside the uh, button label. And under the macro, type dollar sign 22 equals one. This will turn on homing. Go ahead and hit OK. I'm going to hit cancel. And now those two macros are set up. Now that we set up those macros, let's go ahead and click on one. We want to go ahead and hit close home. After that, we want to finish setting up this rotary chuck. So come up to the main menus and go to laser tools and then down to rotary setup. Now this is where you're going to basically set up the complete rotary. If you notice on the top, you have a choice between rotary type. You either have chuck or roller. You want to choose chuck for your rotary chuck. And underneath that, it says enable rotary. There's actually two places you can access this. There's one in this box and there's one over here in the laser um, control area right there under enable rotary. They're both the same button. Wherever you want to implement it is up to you. But since we're in this uh, box, let's go ahead and turn it green, which is on. And then you'll see another setting called mirror output to rotary. That's if you ever have to reverse the image that you're engraving onto your object. If it's a... Uh, if you need it mirrored, simple as that. Rotary access, you want to set to Y because we're going to be using the Y axis for your rotary chuck. And now if you own the Algo laser rotary chuck, you want to put 96 in this millimeters per rotation. This is always going to remain consistent because it's based on the actual device that you purchased. Other rotary chucks might use a different number, but this is the one you definitely want to set up in this window because it basically relies on all the calculations based on this window. So your software is going to look towards this calculation in, or in order to make other calculations. Underneath that, you have object diameter and circumference. Now, if you fill one of these up, um, windows in, the other one will change based on the calculation that you put in the other one. So I personally like to use calipers. And when you use a caliper on the object, you're checking the diameter. So if I use calipers and I find the diameter is, let's change this number so you could see what I mean. Let's say my object is 56 millimeters. If you notice, the circumference also changed too. Now you could use the circumference as well if you decide to use a measuring tape, which actually comes with the rotary chuck kit. You can go ahead and wrap around the measuring tape around the uh, circumference of the device and figure out what it is. And when you find out what it is, say it's 210, you'll notice the diameter will change itself. This calculation is important because you're basically telling the machine this is how round my object is that I plan on engraving. For that reason, it'll know to take your artwork and calibrate it and make all the calculations so it fits well into your, into your object. So that's really important. If I put a number there that is smaller than the object that you're actually engraving, or larger than the object you're actually engraving, it's going to go ahead and skew your work and the image will look very distorted on top of the uh, object you're engraving. So it's important to get those measurements correctly. So right now you want to click, you want to make sure your chuck is on, your rotary is enabled, the access is Y, you have 96 in this window, 
And the go ahead, uh, as far as object diameter and circumference, we'll put that in when you know what the uh, diameter or circumference is of your object. I'm going to hit OK. First, you want to clean everything with alcohol. You want to get it as clean as you possibly can. Since a diode laser will totally ignore clear glass, you have to put some sort of foundation on it. I use temper paint. I use a nice black temper paint and I use an airbrush to make sure it's an even coat. These are almost totally dry and then they'll be ready to be engraved. It takes a short time to dry, 20 minutes at the most really, not even. Then go ahead and loosen the jaws and stick the bottle into the place that you want it to be held at. Then go ahead and tighten it up again. Once it's on there, make sure you use the level and make sure it's level. At this point, focus your laser however your laser is focused. You want to do this at the highest point of the object that you are engraving. Of course, don't start engraving until you have your either diameter or circumference placed into your light burn and your image is set up as you want it. This is glass bottle number one. It has a Celtic dragon on it. It looks really cool with the black paint on it. And of course, any black object or black glass would look really fantastic. It came out really nice. Let's go ahead and wash this off. As you see how easily this temper paint comes off, this is in real time. It's not a hassle in any sense of the measure. I was very happy with the way it came out. I engraved this at 3,000 millimeters a minute at 30% power, and I thought that was an excellent uh, choice for this particular type of glass. This is the guitar glass that I created that came out correct because I put the parameters into the right spot. And I actually engraved on both front and back at the same time. So since we're here and you want to learn some stuff, I'm guessing, let me show you how I did this because it's really simple. There it is open. Now, if you notice this box here, I made to represent the circumference of the object that I'm engraving. So that's the glass. That's the glass if you sliced it in half and rolled it out flat. And the measurements of that is 158.750 width this way and 195.779 height. So that right there I know is my uh, circumference. So although I already did this project, I'm going to go ahead and copy that number and I'm going to go to my laser tools. I'm going to go to rotary setup and I'm going to go ahead and hit that in my circumference. There you go. And there's my uh, diameter of the object, which is 62. So now the rotary truck is set up to do this object because it knows the size of it. Now, if you want to be able to put something on both sides of it, basically what you're doing is taking the circumference and cutting it in half. So once again, this black box on the outside represents the entire circumference. Now, I took this guitar right here, and I edged it all the way to the side of the glass, one side of the glass. It's lying flat right there. And I took the other guitar and I put it in the middle of the circumference. And the way I figured that was I have this square right here. And this is the way I went ahead and did it. I'm going to duplicate this square and bring it over to the side so I can show you what I did. So here's this square. Now I know that the circumference entirely of this box is 194 by 0.779. So I went ahead and opened my calculator and I placed that number in there. 194.779. I divided it by 2, which equals 97.395. So this number right here, if I did this correctly, should match the height of this box right here. Well, 
97.390. Why it's a little different, I do not know. But, you know, it's not enough. You know, it's point, it's three, it's three numbers from the, uh, from the decimal point. I'm not too concerned about it. But what I did at that point was pull down one of the guidelines and matched it up with the box. There's the box that shows that. And then I went ahead and dragged this second object right there. You see where the, uh, F from Fender reaches that div that line right there. I know that uh, right now it is at the exact opposite side. Let me go ahead and delete that um, line. It's on the exact opposite side of the glass now because it is measured perfectly besides the five. And uh, so this is going to work, as you'll see. I'm going to go ahead and print this out to show you the video of it anyway. And here it is. It came out really nice. I did the engraving at the same speed and power. I did this at 2,500 millimeters a minute and at 30% uh, power. And my friend was thrilled. It really came out nice. I actually have plenty more footage. I filmed everything that I did and a lot of stuff that just was overkill. This video is long enough. It was... Uh, Review of the Algo Laser rotary chuck, which is fantastic. It does just what it needs to. It was well built. It's sturdy. It, it is really sturdy. You'll see when you get it in your hands. I hope this video also played a role of like a beginner's guide of how to use a rotary chuck, how to set it up, how to set it up in light burn, and, you know, how to avoid certain pitfalls. You definitely want to make sure you get your diameter or circumference correctly because you'll end up with a cup, well, like this one, which, you know, I'll give to a friend of mine, but it's definitely distorted and it wasn't what I was intending, that's for sure. Well, now for the most important part. Everyone, we share this planet. Let's try to get along together. This place could be a party if we all could just be good to each other. Oh yeah, and like and subscribe if you like. I like sharing this information. I try to be detailed. So I'd appreciate a like if you don't mind, and subscribe. I'll be making more videos pretty soon. Y'all come back, you hear? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.